thanks for choosing to watch the video. It's another Perch Masters again, and I'm very excited to say that in this one, I'm joined by Tom Hunt. Tom operates at the highest level when it comes to lure fishing. Indeed, he's the current captain of Team England's lure squad. He's got multiple tournament wins under his belt on boats, rivers, canals, street fishing in UK and in Europe, and he's caught a lot of very, very big perch. As a quick heads up, make sure that you watch this one right to the end because we do get quite a result at the 11th hour just when we didn't expect it. As always, this one is packed full of tips and tactics that I'm sure are going to help us improve our catch rates. Uh, so pay attention because this is an absolute masterclass in perch fishing with lures. Enjoy. Hi then, Tom. How are you doing? Very well, thank you, mate. Well, thank, you, thank you for being part of this. I oh, appreciate it. I get a day to come fishing with you. So. Which is quite different for you, right? Um, very different for me in terms of pleasure fishing today. Yeah. This is a bit of fun. Normally it's tournaments or practicing for tournaments. So, yeah, but I'm looking forward to a bit of a relaxed day. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I hope you enjoy it. That's the main thing, isn't it? Yeah. Um, where are we? So we're middle of October, right? Yeah, very it's quite, it's autumnal. Quite, quite bright, and yeah, how would you describe the conditions? Um, not perfect for perch fishing, but um, it's nice. The weather's starting to cool down. It's a little bit cooler at night. Um, there's a little bit of colour in the water today. It's not crystal clear. Uh, water temperature's probably around 13-ish degrees, so starting to come down. And you've got normally fancy this time of year for a big perch. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, how how have the conditions affected? How are you starting off? Um, I don't know this venue very well, so I'm always going to start off with search methods. So little little crankbaits, little shads, li just anything that I can fish relatively sort of medium or fast, cover plenty of water. I'm looking for a quick reaction. And then we'll probably discuss this later on. We'll go through the rotation and try and figure yeah. it out because as a tournament angler, I'm always looking to find the center of the bullseye for that day yeah. for those particular conditions. I think particularly for what I, why I really appreciate you being part of this is because when you're fishing, you, it feels like your neck's on the line a little bit more. <laughs> As pleasure fishing, we're just going out. If we get a result, then great. If we don't, it's yeah. not the end of the world. But you guys are at the next level, right? You have to be right on your game. I've right? just got back from the World Championships yeah. and it is intense. You're fishing against some of the best anglers in the world. Exactly. Um, and you don't want to make a fool of yourself. You want to perform at the top level. So yeah, I put a huge amount of effort and time and thought into my fishing. And um, and a lot of the time it pays rewards. Not always, we always know yeah, what fishing's like. like yeah. But um, yeah, my job is normally, even if I've got horrendous conditions or the fishing's super tough, I'm looking at how can I just get one or two bites when most other people would give up yeah. and come back another day. So. I mean, cer certainly for me, I think it, it would be so interesting to see how, how an angler that operates at that level yeah. just tackles an everyday venue like this. It's yep. a fairly, fairly standard stretch canal, isn't it? Yeah, bog standard, yeah. 12 to 15 metres yeah. wide, a few boats, four foot down the middle, and uh, a bit of autumnal conditions, but yeah. mate, well, I think we'll pull one out today. Let's hope so. We'll keep moving. Hopefully we'll catch up with something. <laughs> Excellent. Cool, so I said to you in advance we were coming to a fairly typical canal and that's exactly where we are. Yeah. I uh, wanted to just quickly go through the outfit. What have you decided to bring with you in the way of a rod and a reel? Um, so I've brought um, a W3 Finesse T and C. Now that won't mean a lot to most people, but it's basically a lightweight, fast action rod. It's about seven foot long and it's two to 10 grams. Now I like right. light like delicate sure. outfits. What reel have you got on there and braid? Um, so uh, Shima basic Shimano Stradic. Um, so again, lightweight reel. I th one point that I do always make to people is pay attention to the size of your reel. So yeah. um, for canal stuff and for finesse fishing, I always use a 1000 size reel. 
Okay. Now it looks a little bit small on a seven foot rod, um, but I like it because it's got a lower retrieve rate. And okay. what that allows me to do, if I do want to fish small shads or if I do want to fish ned rigs or drop shots, it allows me to fish much slower. Okay, so gotcha. if I had a two and a half thousand size reel for every turn of the handle, I'm bringing in a lot more line. Um, so I tend to reserve those for power fishing, crank baits, chatter baits, uh, bigger plastics, reservoirs where I'm covering longer distances. Um, and, and that's a really important point. So 1000 size reel for small venues and for when I'm, you know, obviously we're on a canal today we could catch yeah. anything up to three pound but i just like a little bit more delicate nature on a canal it's and really, a lower retrieve yeah, it's rate it's a really interesting way of looking at it because i think most of us me included yeah we're just trying to balance the reel yeah. with the rod yeah and then when it comes on to braid as well again think about the different thicknesses and diameters for what you're trying to achieve so today on a canal you get a few snags, you want a little bit of power. So something around the sort of 10 pound ish mark. Uh, some of the super finesse guys go down to five or six pound braid. For me, I like a little bit more durability, sure. but super high quality eight strand, or actually this is the new Westin 13 strand braid, which is ultra fine, 0.08 of a mil um, and, and super strong. But again, for different presentations, if I'm fishing up in the water for say Xander, I might want a thicker braid to hold it up a little bit more. Um, uh, again, like just different presentations yeah. with different methods. I'm not always going for ultra light. I'm no. going for what I need out of that setup and that method. And you've got a fluorocarbon leader on, I guess, there. What's what's that? Is yeah, it... anywhere between five and ten pound. Right, uh, gotcha. We've fished for a little bit today and it's pretty tricky. So I've actually just come down to five pound, but normally I start on about eight pound ish. Okay. A little bit of durability if there's some snags. Yeah. Uh, again, some of the guys going down to the tiniest little baits, not quite my style. No. They might go down to two or three pound. But I think for most of us, you know, out there, you need a bit of durability. And you've got fairly, you're fishing fairly light generally. Yeah. Um, tiny little open jig hedge. Don't feel like you need to use a chair, but it's not too snaggy or weedy, is it? Uh, nine times out of 10, I'm always wanting to fish an, an open oh, style yeah. hook, um, just unless I'm just, on a river. Just better hookups. Better hookup ratio. There's nothing's got to happen before you've got the ability for that hook point to be anywhere near the fish's mouth. Whereas yeah, with, gotcha. with an offset hook, something's got to happen, i.e the bait's got to move out of the way. Sure. So I always find you're going to have a slightly better hookup ratio with an open style hook. Um, and that's just my style. Unless I'm using losing a lot of kit, yeah. then I do swap over. Rivers, I tend to be a bit more offset because there's so many more snags. Of course. But Nate, the, the main thing I see people making mistakes with is fishing too heavy. Sure. A lot of the time I'm getting jig heads that are like 0.6 of a gram, sure. 0.75, 1s, 1.2s, like two gram is quite heavy for me what's, on a what's canal. What's that? That looks like a what, 1.5? One? That's, that's uh, about 1.2 that one. Is it? Right. Yeah. Okay. Which again allows me, we're only fishing three or four foot down the middle yeah. deepest. Um, it allows me to stay in contact with it. There's no wind today. If there yeah. was a bit more wind, I'd up it. Yeah. Um, but for a little five cent to shad tea slim that we've yeah. got on there great little search bait and i can fish it a little bit quicker on the retrieve and i can fish it slower on the fall so and the, right, kind of, and the right size hook so it's exiting the lure exactly where you want it yeah right? just yeah. somewhere in the first third to halfway if your if your hook's coming out any part anywhere past halfway it's too yeah. big brilliant well i think that's gone through that in detail yeah let's uh, see if we can get some, get some perch shall we come on yes let's need do it. a big stripey Pike fishing masterclass this is. Well done Tom, there we are. <laughs> Lovely little fish. Look at those fins, absolutely gorgeous. Well we certainly covered enough water, a um, few little pike, first little perch of the day but I'm actually um, feeling a bit more confident now and I think this venue might have a little two pounder in it for us later on. We'll uh, catch up with it. Yeah, look at that. What a little peach. Gotta love them all. Right, pop them back. Yeah, cool. So 
So Tom, I am looking forward to this bit. Very intrigued to see what new you got. This is my little kind of canal box um, mixture of small paddle tails. So anything from like the tiniest things I've got on here are like little one inch things. Tend to fish them on a little custom made rod because you need to go down to sort of, you want like a 0.5 to five gram rod to fish tiny stuff like that. Probably a starter and one, especially on canals that I use a lot is the Shad T Slim in five centimeters. So two inches, it's a great all round bait. You're gonna catch fish as small as a few ounces, obviously all the way up to as, as big as you can get in these canals. Yeah, natural colors a lot of the time, unless you get really, really murky water. And then I'll go up to, you know, my sort of fire tiger colors. And I tell you what, especially on the Midlands canals, pink can be one of the best colors I've ever come across. Don't leave home without a Westin Blood Tees. Right, okay. These are mega. They're little articulated baits, um, right. very, very natural. Fish them on a drop shot nine times out of 10. Yeah. But again, when I that just need worms, a bite, yeah, yeah they're so realistic, they're fantastic. I quite often put two on Do and they sort play? of dance together. Nice. Um, and yeah, that, can okay. be, that can be absolutely fantastic. I also find as well with water temperature that Big perch, not so much. Big perch will keep their fish diet uh, all the way through the winter. Okay. Small perch, if you're on a canal and you just want to go out and get some bites, yeah. smaller perch, and by smaller I mean sort of uh, under pound, pound and a half type size. If you just want some bites, going across to um, bloodworm imitations or, or little crayfish or, or insect okay. imitations. Yeah. I'm sure because the water's so cold, small perch change their diet and they don't eat fry like they do in the summer. Uh -oh. So Do go across to naturals. Yeah, yeah okay. definitely go across to naturals when you need a bite. Okay. Um, and then some bigger size shads, again, the Shad T Slim. You can't leave home without some sort of Ned Baits. Yeah. Um, buoyant sort of Ned bait. So for, again, for Westin, it's the Ned worm. And again, like little sort of bugs or crayfishy creature yeah. sort of bait type ones. I do like a little tube occasionally just with all of the appendages. Of course. And these are fantastic as well. If you want to put a bit of flavor in them, yes. they've got a little chamber in the center, right, which I course. really like. Absolutely. Um, what do you think when you say about scent? Do you scent your lures up much? Not all the time. It's the one thing that the jury's been out for me for like 10 years. And You're I can't, still not sure. I still don't know. I you still, carry it? You got some in your I bag? I haven't got some today, but I do take it. It's in my other big reservoir bag. It's normally, lure fishing is mostly visual and vibration. Yeah, okay. Uh, scent can come into it. It's a percentage gain, and I still don't know when to put it on and when not to. <laughs> no, um, yeah, okay. Kev sometimes swears by it for Xander. Does he? Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, but. I think um, sometimes sort of like, I think that it could give you a bit of an edge, particularly in colored water. Yeah. You know, when yeah. that sort of visual, the, the visually impaired. is taken away, yeah. Do you do noise in the rattles or anything? Um, Are you into that? Not really? I do, I've actually got, so like when I go across to rattles, it's more my power bait. So they're kind of built in. So your jerk baits, your crank baits, Cranks. which we'll come on to in a second. Right, um, okay. And then for, for soft baits again, um, like the Cree Craw, that is the 6.5 Cree Craw that we do, which is absolutely amazing. And again, for colors, yeah. I, we do loads in the range, two or three colors is enough. Okay. A dark one, so black and blue for me, really, really nice color. We've got one called Oyster, um, and typically something with a bit of green in it. I'm a big fan of, of something with a bit of green in it. I'm either silver or green. Silver, because I think evolutionary, your roach, your bleak, your chublets, like your like those bait fish are always gonna be, they're so easy to digest. They got soft fins. Like they are the number one bait fish for predators. Yeah. Uh, I think when perch get into certain systems, sometimes for whatever reason, it might be cormorants, whatever, silver fish have waves where sometimes they're strong, sometimes they're not. When they're not, perch is the number one bait fish. Gotcha. So anything with a little flash of red and, or a bit of green on it is absolutely mega. When, yes. uh, it's that olivey green as well. Yeah. All shade, I'm a big fan of all shades of green. Right, okay. Um, what about size of lures? You've got a lot of different sizes there. Yeah. Um, uh, big lures, big perch? 
Yes, if you're a specimen. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, if you're a specimen hunter, okay. for sure. You know, your 6.5s or, or arguably, I don't know if, I, oh, there we go. I've got one eight centimeter there. Yeah. You know, you ain't going to be catching any small fish yeah. on that. So if you're out and out for a big one. Yeah, and it takes, it takes a bit of, like I said, I'm a tournament angler, so I'm often using smaller baits to try and work out what's going on to get some sort of response. So okay. I can zone in a little bit on yeah. my techniques. Yeah. And I then might, knowing I might need a big fish, I might then start selecting, but typically I'm looking for bites to start with and then rolling through the rotation. Fantastic. So, what have you got to show us in this box, different box? Um, hard baits, crank baits, chatter baits, spinners. So typically this is when the water's warm, I like fishing power baits Okay. Um, at, for big ones as well. Yeah. Um, but also these are the types of baits that on particularly hard days, you can use the aggressive nature, the rattles, to try and wake the fish up. Yeah. If it's one of those really hard days where you think they're really lethargic, yeah. um, running a crankbait through, running a jerkbait through, running a spinnerbait through, yeah. can get their attention that a soft plastic can't. It's very easy to ignore a soft plastic. Sort of hops past, and if you're not in the mood, you can just not pay attention yeah. to it. We had a very interesting chat, which we may as well have now a little while ago, about using cranks and aggressive lures like that really to just trigger them the fish yeah. to get them active yeah even if you don't catch one that, see that's the even most you important point you actually use it as a tool to wake them up wake them not up. necessarily as a tool to catch see, them. that blows my mind that yeah does, but it makes an awful lot of sense i might be in an area and i might have caught one or two yeah. and then it dries up on you a little bit Right. right now in a tournament i might not have the luxury of walking off and coming back to that spot because someone else might be in the spot sure. so i might be carrying on fishing it for a bit okay but then i think to myself i need to try and fire them up somehow so changing your baits over and, and remember purchase a shoal fish so whether they're this big or whether they're four pounders them four pounders still often go around in twos or threes yeah you only need one of them to wake up and the yeah. other two or three yeah. will think, what's he up to? And they'll wake up as well. I had this conversation with Matt Woods. Yeah. Where he talks about them getting one to break rank. Yes, yeah. He talked about that in quite detail. Yeah, yeah, it's a fantastic trick. Yeah, um, seems to be. If, they, if you can get one to break rank, the rest, there's a good chance they'll follow. You've got to consider as well that when we're using a lot of the soft plastics, we're often imitating yeah. something that is a food source, yeah. a shad, a crayfish, a nymph, something like that. So you're really only appealing to, you're asking that perch, hey buddy, are you hungry? Do you want to eat? Now that's leaving a lot up to his decision, yeah. right? Now, sometimes we have those windows of opportunity and they want to feed and great. A lot of the time when we're fishing, particularly in tournament scenarios, I haven't got time to wait for them to come back and be hungry again. I've got to do something that's going to force them a little bit more. Yeah. Sometimes running a crankbait through that's like, it might be clear water as anything and I'm running through a fire tiger because it's a territory response. Yeah. You know, he can't ignore it. He's no, definitely seen he's it, he's see definitely it. felt it. Yeah. And if I can get it close enough to him, it might even be where he twitches to get out the way or he's aggressive and he doesn't want it but in his territory. <laughs> As soon as you get them moving, yeah. you're then potentially back online again yeah. for his senses to be woken up. There's something so I can it. go back through with a soft plastic yeah. and get another bite potentially. Yes. You know, so there's, there's a, lot to, a lot to be thinking about there. Do a lot of people still reluctant maybe to move to the harder baits? I don't know. We've had the conversation. Yeah, they cost, cost. a bit more. Cost don't is they? one thing. Um, depends what type of venues that yeah. you fish. When we're on boats, yeah. There's, uh, uh, we don't tend to get snagged up too much. If you're bank not. fishing, particularly canals, rivers, I've lost two or three yeah. lures today. It can it, obviously it can get sting, can't it? quite expensive. Yeah, yeah I do um, get it. But, but they are effective. <laughs> if you want to be a well-rounded perch angler or big perch angler, you can't get away. In my opinion, you can't get away with just fishing soft plastics. No. Okay. 100%. It's not, it's not, there's not yeah. enough variety there. No, there's not enough. It doesn't cover enough situations. It's too narrow. Yeah. You've got to have, you know, your tail spinners, things like warm water tail spinners. You don't want a big bait. You want a heavy bait that goes up and down. That's working for you the whole time. It's going to appeal. Yeah. Um, you want, you want chatter baits. 
where you've got, you know, you can fit various soft plastic trailers on the back and that, that blade at the front is, is absolutely screaming, you know, yeah. come and hit me. hit me. Warm water, crankbaits, yeah. chatterbaits, spinner tails. Yeah. They're absolutely these, mega. These are like, don't ignore me lures, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you can't say that they haven't no, seen them. I just love the, the, just the way you guys think and, and the, you, you can see that it's another level. Yeah. Next oh, level stuff. Yeah. This is the most exciting bit for me. Yeah. You've got so many different options on how to approach a particular scenario. Yeah. Are they big fish? Do I just need a bite? Is the water colored? Is it freezing cold? Is it warm? Are they active? Are they inactive? There's so many different scenarios out There's there. There's a lot of variables as yeah. well. And, yeah. and I, I, I see you chopping and changing lures quite a lot. Yeah. Um, more so than maybe I do sometimes. It makes me feel like, am I not trying enough different things? And I think maybe other anglers are do the same not not chopping and changing enough there's there's also something to be said for keeping it simple is there okay so let, let right. me once you when you begin a journey yeah which is like right i've got a perfect drop shot i've got a perfect um <laughs> crankbaits so i've got yeah. perfect metals i've got a perfect crayfish i've got yeah. perfect carolina rigs there's a lot out there which is a lot to take on and before you get up to that stage where you're really confident with it you're going to have a lot of pain yeah. There's a lot of like blanks. It feels like then it's, it's step one to just make sure that you cover all the methods, right? Just yeah. make sure you're familiar with all the methods. Step two, knowing when to use them. Knowing when to use them. The only way, right, so this is the best tip I can give anyone okay. of approaching a new method. So if you don't know how to fish crankbaits and you're thinking, yeah, I listened to Tom, that was quite interesting. I need to learn that. Get yourself a couple of crankbaits. Yeah. Only take your crankbaits for two or three sessions. Get used to using You them. are gonna go back to your confidence baits if you take them. Don't take them with you. Nice, I like Force that. yourself to yeah. only take. And you'll be using them in the not wrong scenarios. Yeah, and, and you're blank. Which is fine. Yeah. But, and but you've got it get now. You've to got learn, it. Force yourself to learn. And it. now you've got it in your locker. Yeah, exactly. Right, I love um, that. And the the last one, I can't go without mentioning, like a minnow style twitch bait or a jerk bait. Nine times out of ten, all your soft plastics, all your crank baits, all your chatter baits, they come back on the same line. Yes. Offering something that comes off the center line. Got you. Is yeah. a big deal. All right, and knowing when to put that on is, so if you've got um, what I call mid-style fish, so you've got super positive, mid-style, and then negative fish. Negative's when they're really not really up for it at all. When you've got mid-style fish, the thing that can turn them on nine times out of 10 is a bait that comes off comes the center off line. Comes off that center yeah. line. Walk because the dog. Exactly. Okay. So whether it's a surface bait, whether it's a subsurface twitch bait, um, anything like that it it appeals to the instinct yeah. that you won't get a negative fish to often do that no. like they've got to be a bit in, in the middle to start with so if you've got freezing cold water and they're nowhere near their hunger period it's very difficult yeah. to get them to switch on but if they're mid if you've had a follow if they've showed a bit of interest but you can't get them to convert yeah something that jumps off the center line is the one Definitely. Had exactly the same conversation with Ash. Yeah. Like two or three weeks ago. Yeah. Especially on pressured, on pressured waters. Yeah. If something has just got a plane, which is always on the same line, just going up and down. Yeah. Fish, they're not the cleverest things in the world, but they soon start to pick stuff up. Yeah. You can actually do it with a fluke style bait. So a soft yeah. V-tail. Matt, Matt spoke about yeah. flukes and actually getting jig heads yes. that are a certain shape, yeah. not your typical round And they can jig. dive around a little bit, but so, not as much as a hard bait. A no. hard bait's always going to be. So even even if you can't bring yourself to the hard baits, which <laughs> we feel people yeah. should, even if you want to use your soft plastics for yeah. this, maybe some of these sort of more spearheaded jig heads. And, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And having a look at those and flukes. Yeah. yeah. Again, like, you know, even talking about jig heads, You've got your mushroom style with a bit flatter, yeah. which allows that Ned rig to stand up. Yeah. You can have um, 
ones that I use ones that are on the 45 degree angle for my creature baits yeah. a lot of the time because I want them to swim but I want them to sit there uh, uh, you know not laying yeah. on the bottom you've got your round jig heads you've got tungsten versus lead it's a lot to be thinking about you know I wouldn't use tungsten a huge amount in snaggy venues but I would if, especially if I'm on the reservoirs for example the feel that you can get through tungsten compared to lead is incredible or if I'm having to fish a little bit deeper tungsten's much smaller than lead not, so not such a big deal for you though on rivers and canals tungsten no? it just it's the pain of losing them they're it so is expensive. expensive yeah so tom if you had to choose one lure out of all these fantastic lures you've shown us if you had to choose one lure to catch you a big perch yeah what would it be <laughs> you're not allowed to say it depends <laughs> you're not allowed to say it depends um, if it's this or that go on one for lure. all round every season yeah i would go with a crayfish bait so i would go okay. with the 6.5 westing cree craw in what color what color is that um it would be it would be a dark color it would yeah either be black you don't know and specifically blue. the colors dark blue sort of color yeah it? black and blue that one or, or anything dark it wouldn't worry me too much i just yeah. like a dark color near the deck loads of appendages like i said earlier represents a high protein bait you can fish them up in the water, you can fish them on the bottom. They're really versatile and I can fish them every season. Yeah. I can fish them on a stand-up jig head in the depths of winter, just creeping it along the bottom. Proper big perch magnet. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, and just fab, just awesome. Excellent. Thanks for taking us for all those. That was really so, so interesting to me. I love geeking off about this stuff. <laughs> and what an eye opener. Yeah, my mind is blown. My head is buzzing. Uh, <laughs> And Let's your see. bank account's going to be empty. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if we can catch a perch, shall we? Yeah, come on then. Come on then. As with the previous perch masters, all the links to the lures and where you can get them uh, are actually in the description of the video. Let's get back perching. Got a few of these now, aren't you? Yeah. Back. Beautiful little look at the blue colour on it. It's yeah, lovely. Yeah. Right, I'm back. Next one will be a perch. Next one will be a perch. Tom, how do you think the session's gone so far? Um, what 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 have you tried so far? What are you trying at the moment? Still that little, little it's, shad. It's tricky. Yeah. I think um, we've I've started on a small shad. Yeah. Cast that around. Yeah. I saw a pike swirl actually, so I started on a wire trace. Yeah. Uh, didn't get a pull. Went down to a little crankbait. Thought I was going to get a pull on that with a little pike or, or perch in that area. There's a lot of bait fish, so I wanted something that was going to stand out. Yeah. Um, uh, didn't catch anything at the first spot then basically scaled down and caught a little pike sort of almost immediately yeah. and that's been a little bit of the pattern for the day we've covered quite a lot of ground um, I've stayed on a small shad is that what generally of... been working the small shad is that, yeah. is that what's getting all the, the pike and that exactly and you're not you're not tempted to come off that to maybe avoid the pike um, yes and uh, yes and no um, I know that it's working yeah. and I pay a lot of attention to where fish get hooked in the mouth. Oh, okay. So this, this is quite a cool tip for the people back at home. Um, when you've got fish that are really, really cagey or you're using a bait or a method that isn't quite right, you still might get one, but it tends to be right on the end of the nose or you're going to end up getting a few pecks and not a proper bite. Gotcha. All okay. the bites that I've had today pike and one little perch have all been nice little donks and they've been hooked nicely in the top lip just where I want them to be they're never going to come so off. So you've got, got the method right? That's that telling me yeah. that the met, there's something about the method the colour that type of stuff that's actually right so I'm Good. happy to stick on it for a okay. bit yeah and what I'm tending to do is I use this a paddle tail is probably one of the best search methods gotcha so what I want to try and do is if I can if I can get to an area where I get a perch that might only be eight ounces or so. I might then think about swapping over a little bit of Ned, 
little bit of crayfish, creature bait, to try and search out one of those better ones. Yeah. But I want a search method until I found them. Switching lures. Where yeah. are you going from? Just gonna gonna go over to a Ned. Okay. And just drag it along the bottom for a second. Just feel like feel like we've covered some perch today, but not had a response. So although I've had a few bites, pike, little perch, that type of thing, just to, I feel like slowing the presentation down might help. So for me, that's Ned rigs or drop shot. People have heard me on my videos banging on about dawn and dusk like all the time, uh, shoving it down their throats. I think I do dawn and dusk because it suits my life, yep. like we were talking about earlier. What are your thoughts on bite times or anything like that? Or I mean, can it come at any time? Do you think it, really? can, I, it can do? And I know that for a fact because like all of the four pound perch I've caught have only been in tournaments and they don't start until nine o'clock. Yeah, they typically finish at sort of four. Right. So you don't even hit dawn and dusk half the time? No. Um, oh, okay. And a dawn and dusk will always be classic feeding periods because the, the predators have an advantage when the light levels are low over the bait fish. Right. Um, so they are fantastic times, but it's not the be all and end all. No. You know? So um, I think the main thing is get out there. I mean, in, in the depths of winter, my favorite time is, is the middle of the day because you want, you want that temperature to go up one degree, a little bit of sunshine can just warm them up yeah. enough to make it start happening. So um, <laughs> that's a tiny lure you've chucked on there. I've just gone over What's to that? 0.6 of a gram and a one inch paddle tail. I've never seen anything like it. It looks like a maggot. Well, exactly. I'm just trying what? to get a bite at the moment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, do you think, feel that helps scaling down? It can do. Like we we're just talking about yeah. in the middle of the day as well. Yeah. When it gets very, very difficult, this is. I mean, it's a tiny little fry. It could be an invertebrate. Yeah, it's tiny. You see tiny little. Like I think it, it. The smaller it gets, the more it represents a natural food source. Sure. And when you say scaling down, you're not just talking about the lure. You're talking about your jig head as well, I guess. Like. Yeah. Everything's getting smaller. Yeah, well, I've just... And like, and like the breaking strain of your leader as well, like it all comes down, right? Yeah, that's I've come down to five pound. Uh, that is minute. 0.6 of a gram, and that's uh, about an inch long, that little thing. <laughs> um, and if we can't wow. get a bite on that, then we go to the pub. Right, yes. <laughs> Actually, a lovely day to be in a pub garden, right? Yeah, it would be. <laughs> would be. Uh, no, perseverance. Yeah. We're going to keep persevering. We are. We are. We're going to do it. is a perch we will take it it's the right species so that's what i'm talking about in terms of hooking them that's hooked perfectly in the top lip and he's got three quarters of the lure down his gob so i know that it's the right presentation just a case today of covering enough water to find one that's willing i know that we've got the right presentation fantastic well done mate yes it is getting a little bit bigger and it is a perch it's the <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Happy times. Good good stuff. Excellent. What are you doing? Switching to a crank. Mm. Stepping up the leader a bit. Yeah. Um. Why why a crank? Now. I just feel like We've come across a few small perch there. I think we've covered more big perch. And I feel like I've gone down, gone mm -hmm. micro. Yeah. Had a couple of small perch on little shads and stuff. Just feel like one of the last resorts can be like forcing them on. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. you know, fishing really positive, fish really quick. Don't give them a chance to think about it or see it or look at it properly you've got to try and get them to react. Reaction Pure strike. reaction strike. Yeah. Crank baits for yeah. speed and jerk baits also for speed, but they, you offer it in a different way. So it's it's the speed that it moves and they gotcha. it's like, 
it's in their territory and when something's jumping off the center line gotcha. they almost can't they can't help themselves yes you know and with with a crankbait it's on a it's on a on a one line because you're obviously fishing it you can twitch them a bit but they don't jump off the center line but speed for a crankbait and twitching for a, for a jerk bait yes that, that's the two ways that yeah absolutely no surprise to anyone that follows my content bling perch buzz bite that's Jeez. the one is it? oh my god i've caught so many fish like big perch it's a big perch two magnet. pounder incoming come on two pound plus here we go um, three pounder but you've always got to put a wire trace on anytime you've got trebles on uh, especially because we've had a few that's pike a general today rule, is it as yeah. soon as you've got the trebles on yeah as soon as there's on a the treble trace. On, um always put but keep it light Ooh. 11 pound wire knottable wire and again i think the bit that works for me with the perch fishing got my fluoro coming down got a tiny loop no crimps no, no swivels. swivels no anything that's interesting and i've just got one little clip there to to obviously clip it onto my crankbait again no swivels no i hate heavy like so when you say knotable trace who's that uh, made by afw afw um, yeah american fishing wire oh, um, okay i can find it i'll put a link in the description yeah. but it's, it's completely knotable is it because i've tried knotable, knotable wire before yeah. with mixed results to be honest but this one's all right yeah it's yeah. mate it's absolutely mega what do you think the biggest mistake is that you see when someone's lure fishing for perch staying in one area for too long but so when right. you're using bait and stuff yeah you can sit in one spot you can put some bait in and you can draw them in I think you need to get your hunting instincts out when you're lure fishing. Okay. You've got to cover a bit of water. You've got to try and read the landscape, yeah. see what the fish are doing. They give you a little bit of information. Covering plenty of water is do absolutely you, Do you even key. try and do that when it gets cold? Because I find it's always a bit of a dilemma once it gets cold because you're wanting to fish slow. Yeah. So then automatically you're going to cover less. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a bit of a conundrum, that one, isn't it? It is, because you've got the tri-factor, when it's cold in particular, of you've got a small feeding window of time yeah. in the day. Yeah. You've got a small feeding presentation, so yeah. they'll only want a slow or a particular style. Um, and you've got to be in the right, right place. Maybe apply a little bit more patience, but you've got to remember, we all know this, a lot of the time we roll up to a new area and you get a bite first or second cast. Mm. And it's almost that freshness. It's almost sure. like leave the place alone and then come back again later yeah. instead of spending an hour there. I'd yeah. rather spend 10 minutes, leave for 50 minutes and then yeah. come back again. You're gonna yes. get a better catch rate right. doing that than slogging it in one spot Too for many an hour. people trying to grind them out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, So if you had to give someone one piece of advice, obviously it's going to be move. Don't grind, <laughs> don't try and grind them out. Stay much. active. Any other bits of gem? Any other gem you've got, particularly around big perch? You know, if you wanted to catch big perch, yeah. You got any advice for how we can maybe catch more more of the big ones? There's particular methods. So I would say, if you stuck to a creature style bait and a decent sized creature style bait, you're never going to go far wrong. I think big perch, small perch don't have the ability to feed on those proper crayfish. Right. Big perch, they've got bigger mouths, more powerful mouths. It, they're looking for a higher protein diet. So I think it's a safe bet. What's you, big? Um, Three, four inch? Yeah, I'd say anything from sort of six, eight to 10 centimeters, six yeah. or eight centimeters okay. is, is a good start. And would you fish um, them in a certain way or? Uh, I, I creep them along the bottom so that is one of the times that I do like a crayfish bait on an offset yeah. hook um, okay. so a cheb and an offset hook. Do you think the big ones can be a bit lazy? Can they be a bit slow, a bit more sluggish? And... I think they're pickier. Are they? Yeah, okay. a, like the small perch, a little bit like small pike, they're much more skittish aren't they? Yeah, much more active, much yeah. more excitable. I think a big perch has got a little bit more considered consideration to himself yeah, he's thinking yeah, sort of, yeah yeah and he's not gonna eat everything that goes past his nose no.
So Tom, I'm going to ask you what I've asked all my other perch masters. Why perch fishing? Why lure fishing for perch? Um, I can only speak from personal experience, but yeah. I think a lot of people get this. When you see a big perch in real life, and I, and I mean, I, I'm talking sort of anything over say a couple of pounds. Yeah. There is something truly magnificent about them. Yeah. And when you catch a real big one, like anything over four pounds, yeah, it is. It's almost jaw dropping. Yeah. You know, I've caught big, plenty of twenty pound plus pike, pl plenty of big xander. When you catch a big anything, it's quite good. But there's just something, something special about a big perch. About a big perch. <laughs> yeah. They just take on a different look. Like you say, especially when they get upper threes and fours, they yeah. just look like different. Animals. Mate, they're so solid, and sometimes the aggression of them is amazing as well. You I know, sometimes think it's because we did catch a lot of small perch as a kid. Yeah, they're just not supposed to look like that, are they? Yeah, they're yeah, not yeah. You supposed always to imagine them as just that. Well, they big. should be like yeah. this. Yeah, um, no, I get it. Hundred you know, percent. Why, why, why lure fish in particular, though? No. Oh, no, why not? Why don't you live bait for those big? What is it about lure fishing? It's uh, partly the challenge, yeah. but sometimes the challenge is so much and it's so hard and you're five blanks in and you think, <laughs> no, no, I'm not, not signing up to the challenge anymore. Yeah. Um, the challenge does make it a little bit trickier, I, but personally, it's the fact that you're holding the rod. It's the fact that you're so in direct contact with a lure yeah. that when you get that bite it's just that electricity that comes down the line that thump yeah and you're so it's, it goes back to that hunting thing that i yeah. was saying yeah you know when you're on edge it, it can wake you up we're like you know you might be a couple of hours in and not paying attention in the middle of a conversation and then suddenly it wakes you up and all of your senses are back online yeah, and you're yeah. totally back into it again 100%. You know it can affect you in that way and it's just got that unpredictable nature to it that yeah. we have red letter days we have brutal days that's just fishing in general but i love the unpredictable nature of it yeah. you, you're never going to get the same day twice you know it's been a bit of a crawler i know it's Tough been day. tricky Mate, that is big perch fishing. I think that's what we were saying. This is the reality of it, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, um, you know, one bite can make or break your day. We've had a couple of little ones. The pike, small pike have been really active. They've been really right? active, haven't they? Yeah. Had how many? Six? Six or seven, <laughs> a lot yeah. Of those, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, this is it. Quite often it is a matter of sometimes going away without that specimen perch and just sticking at it, a bit of tenacity and keep at it. and. Eventually one comes along, doesn't it? Mate, uh, that, and that is what makes them quite special, actually. You know, if you caught them every time you went out, it wouldn't quite be the same. So, no. um, but thank you for inviting me on. No, Had thank you day. so much. I mean, I've learned so much. I hope Good. everyone else has as well. Yeah. I'm sure they have. My head's still buzzing from the lure conversations <laughs> we've had today. Can't thank you enough. It's been epic. Thank no, you. Thank, thank you, you very much. And um, yeah, let's have another day out soon. Yeah, let's. <laughs> Is it one? It is, yeah. Uh, if this goes in the net, this... What just happened, Tom? <laughs> oh my God. No sooner have we just finished filming saying it's the been a tough day, I've had two little perch, and I said, I've got to have three more casts and then I've got to go. And we've done it. We've done it. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's get some proper shots of him. I need to get this on yeah. a tripod. Well done, mate. That is amazing. <laughs> I can't believe it. We fished all day for that one fish. <laughs> How about that? I can't believe it. We had just done a bit to camera. We had said that it only takes one bite. It only takes one bite, didn't it, Tom? And he did it. Didn't doubt him for a second. <laughs> Birch master. <laughs> Mate, How's lovely, that? lovely deep fish. Look at this hump on it. I love it when they've got that hump yeah. on the back of their neck. When you know they're big ones, isn't it? Nice fatty. 
Oh, well pike. chuffed with that, mate. After a couple of small ones and a few little tiny micro pike, one bite makes your day, doesn't it? Look at that. That is beautiful. Absolutely awesome. <laughs> Perch masters, as they say. Well done, mate. <laughs> So, oh, incredible angling there by Tom. What a finish. Um, what was interesting, I think, is you might have remembered that about halfway through the video, he was looking at where the fish was hooked in the mouth and he sort of like said that he could tell that he got the method right just by how positively that fish had been hooked. And that was, he had got it right because that was the one that landed the decent one at the end. Tiny, tiny little nano minnow. How many of us would have fished like that? You know, it scaled right, right down. Five pound line, tiny jig head, a nano minnow that was not even an inch long, tiny, tiny. Um, yeah, I'm not sure, not sure if I'd have done that. And that did definitely feel like one of those sessions where I might have gone away with a blank. Just to give you an idea of how tough it was on the day, we actually stumbled across a guy that was um, live bait fishing for the perch and he was struggling to catch them. So uh, Tom really did pull a rabbit out the hat on that one, I think. If you enjoyed the video, then please remember to like and subscribe and all that stuff. Um, I'm also gonna put a link to the Perch Masters playlist on screen somewhere. So why not watch or re-watch those? I would also suggest that you definitely go and check out Tom Hunt's fishing channel. That's right, Tom's got a YouTube channel as well, and I will put a link to that uh, on screen somewhere, but that is definitely, definitely worth checking out. Go over and subscribe. That just leaves me to very quickly give you some of my favorite takeaways. Consider leaving your confidence lures at home, those ones that you use all the time. Leave them at home and force yourself to learn some new techniques and methods. Maybe sometimes consider using power baits to wake those fish up, try and get one to break rank, you know, talking about cranks and jerks and things like that. You might notice that now we're starting to form some parallels between these perch masters. Again, he talked about coming off the center line uh, with soft baits using flukes and spearheaded jig heads, or of course with jerk baits, things like that. But walking the dog or coming off that center line can be quite a big thing. And there also seems to be something about the colour green. Keep on the move, don't grind them out. But most of all, remember that it only takes one bite. A huge thanks to Tom again for getting involved. What an angler. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one.